Shahi's question was, why in the world are we doing all of this? I said, I've done everything and I've built everything and I understand everything, but you know, sorry, I've done everything, I've built everything. I don't understand anything at all. I'd just like you to explain to me uh, why in the world, what is the purpose, what is the objective? So how many of you think, how many of you have the same question? Just, just raise your hands. Why have we done this? I think there are a couple of questions that some of you have identified and you've also asked which sort of lead into the same answer that Shahi has asked for. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a step back and I'll actually go back to my earlier version. So this is the most, let me just save this. This one I was working on right now before you guys started. Let me use a recent version. So I have two windows. If you see through my windows list, you'll actually see that I have FV1 and I have FD v2.56 open right and uh, simple testing for this would be to plug in let's say i go to toggle and poke let's say i put in 04 04 now what should you expect to see when i say 04 04 so if i turn this on right uh, and i turn the clock on also in poke uh, what should you expect to see? Click on the clock again multiple times. Nothing is happening, right? So how do you fix this? What are the possibilities? Turn on V again. Uh, look at the circuit one more time. So turn it on, turn it off, turn it on, turn it off. No answer. Turn the clock on, off, on, off, on, off, on. No answer. What do you think? Replace the sub with a pin. The sub pin has the clock. The sub pin has the clock. Very good. That's one. But uh, what else is missing? There is actually no clock pin here, right? So you can see that. But I think the point that has been identified is actually really key. And that point is that there is no clock key here. Now, why isn't there a clock key here? If I go to the 8-bit adder circuit. So where is the 8-bit adder circuit? This is my 8-bit adder circuit, right? In this circuit, the clock key has not been identified. It's not has not been labeled. The key doesn't, the pin doesn't exist. So one possibility is I can just remove it from here and plug something else in. Let me just put in a pin here. I'll call it clock. Admit. And then if I go back to my, what is the full CPU? Yeah, there we go. So now we have a clock key. Do you think now it should, should work? Do you think now it should work? W in on, turn clock on. Anything happening? Nothing's happening, right? Why is that? So the first, the first reason, the first reason why we made you do what we made you do is for you to understand how to figure out and address the debug process. And uh, the reason why I have two different versions open, I have a version here which is uh, v2.5, and then I have another full version. Put clock in reg, error in previous circuit, maybe isn't working, why do we use an input pin? Go to the 8-bit pattern. Okay, so these are all valid answers. But I think the one of the key elements is that if you think in terms of the resistors, the usage of resistors here, right? Uh, your output resistor, there are three resistors, right? This is your resistor A input, this is your resistor B, uh, this is also an input, and this is your resistor C, this is your output resistor. But if you see the W, the right enabled, key is disabled, has not been plugged in, has not been keyed in. So one possibility is, okay, uh, we can do something very, very quickly. We can connect the relevant pins so that this works. Uh, so connect this one also to so this works. And then bring the right enabled key here and then bring it here. So this works, right? This is what. And I think the second bit is I need to connect the clock. So I'm going to connect the clock here to this element, connect the clock here to this element, and then connect the clock here to this element. So now, now we fix this piece. You think it should work now? You think it should work? And while we're at it, you know, let's just connect the, the C out key also so that we actually have, let's plug it into a output. There we go. Should we connect and see whether it works now? Should it work? So Shahi said it should work. So let's, uh, let's remove this from here. And 
go to book mode turn it on on off on off oh, so 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 you see the answer here it says 08 right this has gone off so let me put this let me put this down to 04 and let me put down 05 so 04 and 05 so now when i do 04 and 05 and i turn the clock on and off we should expect to see what 9 how many cycles does it take to get 9 we didn't get a 9 we just got a 0 so what happened here now so you've now plugged in the relevant connectors and you've plugged in the relevant inputs that are required to make it work uh, but some of some pieces some place is missing and the right way to do this now is to actually go to the 8 bit adder circuit which is here this is the 8 bit adder circuit let's go to the 8 bit adder circuit this is the 8 bit adder circuit see why this circuit is not working and try and figure out what is wrong here if everything that we expect to see here is connected correctly is something missing is not missing uh, that's one element so that's one that's one aspect of it. in the 8 bit adder oh all the rights on yeah that's a good point that is a good point spawn so so you have to no no i i'm just illustrating uh, z i have i haven't done the full cpu as i'm just showing you so there was a question that was asked that was a question asked by shaheed is why are we doing all of this and i'm just trying to walk through the basic logic of why are we doing all of this so i think the first element of the of the rationale or the basis for making you do all of this is that we we want you to understand how the debugging cycle works so if you go back to your very very basics your first step was to build a two bit adder then from the two bit adder you built a four bit adder let me zoom out then from the four bit adder you built the eight bit adder then you built the complement two complement circuit and then you went out and did a couple of different variations so this was your four bit adder subtractor with two complements a circuit uh, and then I go back to the 8 bit adder the 8 bit adder actually used this specific piece and element so this is v2.56 right but prior to v2.56 if you go to the most recent design so so i want you to notice this specific aspect right if you look at this specific design all right so now if i switch from 2.56 to my my latest version which is v1 is there a difference so what is the difference between this circuit and the previous circuit? What has changed? How is this circuit different from the previous circuit? I'm going to just zoom this in, maximize this so they can see it properly. This is V2.56. And what is this? This is basically the sub circuit for a eight bit adder, right? So it uses two four bit adders. It has a adder and subtractor component built into it. And then it's working. Now, how is this different from the next one? And why is it different? What is different? Can you notice the difference between the two? So this is the first one. This is the first one that I showed you, which is V2.56. And this is uh, FV1. So this is the first one, the original one. And this is the new one. What is the difference? And why Very good, Azab. Very good, Usman. So resistors used for buffering, which is not used. Uh, now the question is why have i not used the register in this implementation whereas i've used it in the earlier one and this goes back to the question that hum had asked ke hum jo register istemal kar rahe uski wajah se you know i need to use too many clocks and then there is a certain delay that's coming up in the cycle that we are struggling with right so shahi this goes back to your question hum that this goes back to your question when we teach binary mathematics or we when we teach digital circuits or we teach basic computer logic um, there are two ways of teaching it one is that we can just tell you okay this is how gates work and this is the logic or binary algebra that you can use to build those gates and create circuits just doing that in isolation is not enough for you to understand and appreciate what actually goes in and the level of sophistication and complexity that's required in actually executing a single very simple transaction that requires you to pick up data from memory uh, put it on the bus bring it to your internal registers execute it 
and then put it back on the bus and then write it back to memory and then to execute this again and again and again for you know multiple instructions is an even bigger challenging problem and that requires a fine i think the right word is an orchestra of activities that work across different pieces so one reason for making you do all of this for you to have an appreciation for these components and the only way of building that appreciation is to actually do what you're doing right now uh, we can't teach it so in a lecture i can say oh you know look how this complicated exercise is done i can walk you through examples in the class but till you actually do it with your own hands you know you would not understand what goes on inside the the mind of your machine the reason why we made you do what we made you do over the last 4 weeks is so that you can understand um, at an intrinsic level how these things work so how did i or why did i remove the resistors in this specific implementation as i've done it here right now right does it is a, the resistor actually needed is it adding any value so this is the original one right is the resistor needed and if you remove the resistor what happens what happens to your the number of cycles you need to get an output out if you keep the register how, how many cycles does it take for you to get an answer and if you remove the register how many cycles does it take for you to get an answer and then also think in terms of the extra input the extra cycles it reduces the cycle by one if you look at the implementations and i go back to logisim again so in my implementation and i'm still working on it right i'm not finished so there is a this is this is like a full cpu where i am just experimenting and trying things out and then this is my second cpu a second version where i'm trying to put things together uh, in this specific implementation because i already have a resistor outside the alu uh, as an output resistor do i really want to keep one more inside it why should i add another cycle by adding a cp adding a resistor inside the alu when i'm going to use it later on as an output resistor at as part of my overall implementation 